In this video, we'll discuss two of the automatic flight envelope protection systems that may be found on aircraft equipped with a Garmin GFC 700 autopilot system. We'll cover the Electronic Stability and Protection System, or ESP, which provides protection when hand flying, as well as overspeed and underspeed protection, which provides protection while flying with the autopilot engaged. The U.S. National Transportation Safety Board has placed loss of control in flight on its most wanted list and has asked that stakeholders recognize the importance of their roles in the reduction of loss of control accidents. They also emphasize the individual pilots bear the ultimate responsibility to reduce these adverse events through ongoing education, flight currency, self-assessment, and vigilant situational awareness in the cockpit. As stakeholders in this process, Garmin has developed safety enhancement features that may be incorporated in aircraft equipped with a Garmin autopilot system. These features help to maintain an aircraft within normal flight parameters, using components of the autopilot system to apply corrective forces to flight controls. This video is intended to educate pilots on how the Garmin protection features function, the types of enunciations that may appear, and how these protective modes can be disengaged or disabled. Viewers should note that these protection features and associated enunciations will differ by aircraft manufacturer and airframe, and that you should review the pilot's guide for your aircraft to ensure a complete understanding of these features as installed in your aircraft. The pilot's guide is the final authority for how these systems function in a particular airframe. Automatic flight envelope protection modes may be enabled both for hand flying and for flying with the autopilot engaged. Electronic Stability and Protection, or ESP, is enabled when hand flying. When enabled, it monitors for out of envelope events and applies corrective force to the flight controls. Overspeed and underspeed modes may be enabled to provide protection when flying on autopilot. These protective modes monitor for speed envelope exceedances and will apply corrective forces during exceedance events. The design intent of ESP is to help pilots maintain normal flight parameters when hand flying the aircraft. These normal flight parameters are set by the manufacturers for each airframe. ESP discourages the exceedance of predetermined roll and pitch attitude values, certain airspeed envelope exceedances, and on some airframes, angle of attack parameters. It's important to note that ESP is not armed and will not engage if the autopilot is engaged. If enabled, ESP automatically engages when the aircraft exceeds one or more conditions that place the aircraft beyond normal flight parameters. Enhanced stability for each condition is provided by applying a force to the appropriate control surface to return the aircraft toward the normal flight envelope. You may perceive this as resistance to control movement in the direction that would move the aircraft further away from normal flight parameters. It could be thought of as a sort of invisible flight instructor nudging the controls back towards normal parameters. As the aircraft deviates further from a normal attitude or angle of attack range, or the airspeed continues to increase or decrease, the corrective force increases to encourage control movement in the direction necessary to return towards normal values. When the maximum force level is reached, force remains constant up to the maximum engagement limit for pitch and roll attitudes. Above the maximum engagement limit for pitch and roll, Corrective forces are removed, which would allow you unencumbered control actuation to recover from the extreme attitude. There is no maximum engagement limit related to airspeed envelope exceedances, so the corrective force would remain active as long as the speed is outside of the normal envelope. Corrective forces are removed any time you apply control input towards normal values. When the ESP system is enabled, Roll limit indicator bars will appear on the roll scale on the PFD. These double lines stay at the 45 degree mark on each side of the scale, providing visual indication of when you can expect the ESP system to activate. Upon activation, the on-side roll limit indicator will move to the 30 degree mark and you will feel the force provided by the roll servos as they work to bring the aircraft back towards 30 degrees of bank. This force is applied between 30 and 75 degrees of bank, with an increasing amount of force as the roll attitude steepens and decreasing force as roll attitude decreases. Peak corrective force is reached at 60 degrees of bank. If the roll attitude exceeds 75 degrees of bank,
the ESP system will disengage, as that is the maximum engagement limit for roll correction. Reducing the roll attitude below 75 degrees will allow ESP to re-engage. Once the aircraft is back to 30 degrees or less roll attitude, ESP will disengage, and the on-side roll limit indicator will return to the 45 degree mark. An important point to keep in mind is that any time the ESP is active, if you apply control movement in the same direction as ESP, ESP corrective forces are removed to allow unencumbered recovery to normal attitudes. Protection in the pitch axis may be for excessive pitch up only, or may provide both pitch up and pitch down protection. The pitch angle at which ESP pitch engagement occurs will differ by airframe, and is set by the aircraft manufacturer. For this example, we'll discuss a system that engages between 20 degrees and 50 degrees nose up. Once ESP is engaged, it will apply an opposing force between 15 and 50 degrees nose up. The opposing force increases or decreases depending on the pitch angle and the direction of pitch movement, with peak corrective force applied at 25 degrees nose up. This force is intended to encourage movement of the controls in the direction of a normal pitch attitude for the aircraft. If the pitch attitude exceeds the maximum engagement limit of 50 degrees nose up, ESP will disengage, allowing for recovery from the unusual attitude without control force resistance. Once the aircraft is once again in the 20 to 50 degree pitch range, ESP re-engages until the pitch is less than 15 degrees, at which point ESP will disengage. Again, if you apply control movement in the same direction as ESP, the ESP corrective force will be removed. For aircraft equipped with pitch down protection, ESP works in a similar manner to protect from excessive pitch down conditions. The angle of attack protective mode requires an aircraft to have an AOA sensor that is interfaced with the Garmin system. If the sensed AOA approaches the stall angle of attack, ESP force is applied to lower the nose. A pitch limit indicator will appear on the PFD pitch scale at this point, showing a pitch limit of 4 degrees below the stall pitch attitude. If the aircraft's pitch angle matches the pitch limit indicator, then ESP will lower the nose. If the aircraft's pitch attitude is below the pitch limit indicator, ESP force will disengage. On some aircraft, you can monitor the sensed AOA with an indicator that appears on the PFT. ESP may also include a high airspeed mode. If a designated airspeed or Mach number is exceeded, corrective forces will be applied in an attempt to prevent the high speed condition. As already mentioned, this force does not have a maximum engagement limit so the nose-up control force will be applied and continue if the aircraft is at any speed value in excess of the designated VMO or MMO. At increasing speeds beyond VMO or MMO, the corrective force increases to a maximum force level. For aircraft without an AOA sensor, an optional low-speed protection mode may be provided. With this mode installed, when the stall warning system determines a stall condition is imminent, ESP will engage and apply force in the direction necessary to lower the nose of the aircraft. Pitch is managed to keep the aircraft a few knots above the stall speed. On some aircraft, once ESP has been actively engaged for a designated amount of time, as defined by the aircraft manufacturer, the autopilot will automatically engage with the flight director in level mode, bringing the aircraft into level flight. An associated oral alert of Engaging autopilot will be heard, and the flight director mode enunciation will indicate level for vertical and lateral modes. If this feature is not included with your aircraft, Garmin recommends briefing the crew and passengers about when the level button should be engaged. Important to note here is that once the level mode is active, the flight control should not be manipulated, as this may induce automatic pitch trim movement. If manual control of the aircraft is desired at this point, you may disconnect the autopilot using the AP Disconnect button on your flight control. The aircraft must be above 200 feet AGL for ESP to activate. ESP is only active when the autopilot system is not engaged. 
The maximum engagement limit for roll attitudes is 75 degrees. Beyond this limit, the ESP system will disengage. The maximum pitch engagement limit is 50 degrees, either nose up or nose down. Beyond these limits, the ESP system will disengage. There is no limit for either low airspeed, high airspeed, or high angle of attack engagement of the ESP system. Finally, ESP does not have upset recovery logic built in, and cannot provide the rapid, full control movements that may be required for recovery from such situations. ESP is an automatic function of the autopilot and depends upon that system to be operational. ESP is normally enabled at system power-up after a successful autopilot pre-flight test and will only engage when the aircraft is above 200 feet AGL. For installations that are configured to provide partial autopilot functionality in the event of a component failure, ESP will also provide partial functionality. For example, if a pitch servo were to fail, the ESP system would still be available for roll modes. While there are variations in alert messages between airframes, you will receive an alert notifying you when ESP is operating in degraded mode. An ESP fail alert will be displayed if the ESP system fails. And you will see an ESP off alert if you disable ESP through the system settings page on your Garmin integrated flight deck. When designing ESP, Garmin recognized that there are times when exceeding the normal limits may be required to avoid an undesired event, such as maneuvering to avoid a mid-air collision or to avoid an obstacle. For this reason, the ESP system was developed with corrective forces low enough that a pilot can overcome the system if needed. You can interrupt ESP by pressing and holding the autopilot disconnect switch on all aircraft and on aircraft where a Control Wheel Steering, or CWS, button is installed, pressing and holding that button has the same effect. It is important to understand that to prevent ESP from re-engaging, you must keep pressure on the button. Upon releasing the Autopilot Disconnect Switch, or CWS switch, ESP force will again be applied, provided the aircraft is within engagement limits. ESP can also be overridden by overpowering the servo's mechanical torque limit for roll attitudes. There are some training maneuvers for which you may want to disengage ESP. While it is certainly possible to conduct steep turns, stalls, slow flight, or unusual attitude maneuvers while holding down the autopilot disconnect switch, it is also possible to disable the ESP system through system settings in your integrated flight deck. Doing so will remove the protection provided by the system, so you should remember to re-enable the system once your maneuvers have been completed. Again, the ESP system will re-enable automatically at startup for your next flight. Refer to the pilot's guide for your aircraft for guidance on the steps to take to disable and re-enable ESP. During this review of the ESP system, we've discussed a maximum force level of the automatic corrective force applied to return the aircraft to normal flight parameters. This maximum force felt by the pilot holding a flight control, whether a stick or a yoke, will vary based on airspeed and the trim state of the aircraft, but will never exceed 60 pounds in pitch or 30 pounds in roll. Keep in mind that a pilot would only feel these forces if applying flight control pressure that is moving the aircraft away from normal flight parameters and the maximum forces would only be felt upon reaching a significant level of deviation from normal flight parameters. The moment the pilot moves the flight control in the direction of normal flight parameters, the corrective force is removed entirely. Now that we have covered the system designed to provide protection while hand flying your aircraft, we will now take a look at two modes of automatic protection that are provided while flying on autopilot. Underspeed protection is designed to discourage aircraft operation below minimum established airspeeds with the autopilot on. There are two modes of operation of underspeed protection, altitude critical and altitude non-critical. In altitude critical mode, underspeed protection activates when nearing stall speed. In altitude non-critical mode, activation occurs as the aircraft slows to below the minimum commandable autopilot speed. An example of when altitude critical mode may activate is during level off from a descent, where the power has been reduced to minimum. 
If the pilot becomes distracted during level off and forgets to increase power, airspeed will eventually diminish to the point where a stall could occur. Underspeed protection activates when within a few knots of stall speed and lowers the nose of the aircraft sufficiently to maintain this stall margin. As the aircraft slows to a predetermined speed, you would see an enunciation of min speed appear near the top of the airspeed tape on the PFD. And when the airspeed trend vector reaches a predetermined point, you will hear the oral alert of airspeed. If the airspeed continues to decelerate to the stall warning, the lateral and vertical flight director modes will change from active to armed. You may see a red underspeed protect active enunciation near the airspeed tape and the oral alert of airspeed will be heard every five seconds. The flight director will provide pitch down guidance to maintain an airspeed slightly above stall speed and command wings level. To correct the underspeed condition, power should be increased as needed and the autopilot system will then direct a climb back to the selected altitude. Once back at the selected altitude, the underspeed mode deactivates and the previously selected vertical mode, in this case altitude hold, will resume. Overspeed protection is another mode that is active when the autopilot is engaged. This mode protects against inadvertently flying at too high of an airspeed. An example of when this mode may activate is when ATC provides a late descent clearance to an altitude constraint. Even with a full reduction of power, airspeed may approach airframe limitations in the attempt to meet the constraint. Should this occur, the overspeed mode will activate, pitching the nose of the aircraft up to ensure that the maximum speed is not exceeded. In this case, you would see a max speed enunciation near the top of the airspeed tape on the PFD. Corrective action should be to reduce power and or adjust the pitch reference to slow the aircraft. To disengage underspeed or overspeed modes of operation, the first action should be to correct for the condition. An underspeed condition is normally corrected by applying additional power. An overspeed condition may be corrected by a reduction in power and or actuation of drag inducing devices if within limitation speed for those devices. Pressing the autopilot disconnect button will disengage the autopilot. However, for aircraft so equipped, the ESP high speed and low speed modes would then activate. Pressing and holding the autopilot disconnect button would disengage the autopilot servos, as would pressing and holding a CWS button. While these actions will normally provide for disengagement of autopilot protective modes, should you find it necessary to remove power from the autopilot servos, you should consult your aircraft flight manual for the proper procedure to accomplish this action. There is no system that is more effective at maintaining an aircraft in the normal flight envelope as well as a highly trained and proficient pilot. Automatic protection modes of the Garmin Autopilot system are designed as a backup for the pilot, providing forces to restore the aircraft to normal parameters should they ever be exceeded during flight. An automation management philosophy employed by professional aviation organizations around the world is that if the automation is doing something unexpected, you should disconnect the automation and hand fly the aircraft. Pilots should be familiar with how these systems operate in their aircraft and be aware of the methods that can be employed, if necessary, to disengage, override, or disable them. Again, the protective features and enunciations in your aircraft may differ somewhat from what you have seen here. Be sure to review the pilot's guide for your aircraft to ensure your understanding of the installed system.